Welcome, this is Pam. Today we're going to be talking about is worm therapy good for multiple sclerosis? I have wanted to talk about this topic for a very long time. Over several years, like researchers have been indicating like, you know, it might be really helpful to give multiple sclerosis patients to infect them with worms because that could help to regulate the immune system. So we're gonna talk about the science behind worm therapy for multiple sclerosis and to see, could this potentially be helpful? Or is this just another opportunity to look for a new patentable disease modifying drug or several treatments? If we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha and I'm the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And I love to share information about like number one, what the true cause of multiple sclerosis is and other diseases. I love to educate people on parasites because I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 35 years ago. And by the grace of God, I learned really early on that the disease I was dealing with was really caused by parasites. And so since then, we've helped hundreds of people from many, many countries. And I just get tears in my eyes every time I get just, I just had some amazing updates today, actually from one of our students in the program. His mother-in-law sent me a little note saying, thank you so much. My son is getting his life back. My daughter-in-law is like saying that her husband's coming back. Like I hear that all the time when we treat the parasites, when we treat the cause. And the research that shows that worms are good for MS is literally a, a decoy. It's a sidetrack. It's getting us off track. And I'm going to share with you why that is so. So again, for, for several years, there have been studies that they've been looking at, you know, infecting people with, with worms, people that have multiple sclerosis with parasites to, because let me take a step back. It is believed in standard of care that multiple sclerosis is an is like an autoimmune disease where our immune cells are attacking our nerve cells and nothing could be further from the truth but that's what they believe and so they're always just looking for treatments to suppress the immune system they call it modulating the immune system and i want to clear that up right now modulation immune modulation to me is something that's positive is something where you're supporting the body where your immune system isn't having to work so hard. Um, so in my world, I believe that our immune system is intelligently designed. It is there to protect us from infection. That's the scientific part of the immune system. It's, it's amazing. Like when I was in university, my cell biology teacher told me, he said, Pam, and he said to the whole class, what I'm teaching you right now is what we understand today in science, but I'm telling you that thing, this is not, we don't have all the answers and things are gonna change. And so I'm probably not giving you all of the perfect accurate information, but this is the best that we know at this time. And still today, the immune system is so incredibly intelligently designed that it is not, it has not just gone haywire for no reason. So what I believe is that, and this is what a lot of integrative practitioners believe, is that there's always some type of infection present that if we're dealing with kind of these autoimmune disease, diseases or symptoms, so it is not our immune system attacking itself. There is some kind of parasite present. So then immune modulation, if we have this intelligent wonderful, amazing immune system that keeps us alive when there's thousands and thousands of parasites all around us in our air, in our water, in our food, in our produce, etc. Then immune modulation is when we do things that support our immune system. So this could be getting extra sleep. This could be decreasing the carbs so that we're not feeding the parasites so the inflammation goes down so our immune system doesn't have to work so hard. This could be living a healthy lifestyle, being active, all of those things help to modulate the immune system and we notice symptom improvement. So when big pharma is doing research, and, and again, I'm not a, totally against big pharma at all. I, I shouldn't even say that word, but it, it, I guess the reason I put it in here is because we're getting frustrated, right? We're not going after the cause. The research from a lot of these places, they're solely looking at how can we make a new patentable 
immunosuppressive disease modifying maintenance drug that somebody's going to take for the rest of their life. And that is the problem, right? So in the world of integrative health, immune modulation is something that we, we do to strengthen our immune system, to support it, to take the burden off of it. Whereas in this research where they're giving worms to people with MS or they're trying to, I'll, I'll get more into details with this, but basically they're saying that giving worms to people that have MS, that suffer from MS, helps to modulate the immune system. No, no, no. There are at least 17 different ways scientifically known that parasites suppress immune function. They suppress our immune system because they want to live in us and they don't want our immune system to take them out. They, they have to somehow escape our immune system. They have to hide from our immune system. So they produce a variety of different molecules so that our immune system is not going to kill them because that's it, the primary job of the immune system is to destroy parasites. So first, there's been quite a few studies, not a ton, but a few studies, that have really looked at infecting MS patients with, and not just MS, but other autoimmune diseases, in particular uh, inflammatory bowel disease. They, they give people hookworms. And because it's not ethical to give people worms, they would give people worms that, are, that normally would infect other animals, not humans. So the problem is when you infect a human with a parasite that doesn't really want to live in the human, hopefully that's true, but if it doesn't really want to live in the human, it's not going to stay in the digestive tract of the human for very long. And then the researchers were not really able to get, were not able to study what they wanted to. They wanted to kind of look to see like if we infect people with these worms and then are we going to see immune modulation? Are they going to have less MS attacks? So... Um, they use, so then an, another way to study this would be to use mice and to use the EAE mouse model of MS, or sorry, the animal model of multiple sclerosis. And we've talked about that before. Basically, they're taking mice and they are in, they're giving them the myelin, uh, a, a protein, a myelin antigen protein, and they're also injecting them usually with some kind of a really strong to toxin like pertussis, and they're causing... Um, a type of condition in the mice or the rats that is similar to MS, it's not exactly the same, but they'll have lesions in more in their spinal cord than in their brain. That's E-A-E. So what they did is they, they want some, but it's interesting, they know how to give MS-like disease to, to mice by putting this toxin, but, you know, it's like, well, maybe a different toxin could be causing MS in us, but they don't look at it that way there. No, 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 it's your immune system. Your immune system is attacking you. Anyhow, so another way that they could study these, these um, giving these worms and just looking to see, you know, the immune response would be infecting uh, rats with these hookworms and also getting these rats or giving these rats this EAE MS-like condition and giving them hookworms and seeing what happens. And they notice that when these mice are induced with EAE, and so they're, they have these, they have neuroinflammation, lesions and in their spinal cord, and then they give them hookworms, they notice that the severity of the EAE decreases. So it, it does, giving the rats the worms does suppress the immune system and they have less inflammation. That's the bottom line. But that doesn't mean that that's a good way to get, you know, get the inflammation down. Not at all. So again, I've shared this on my master class training for years that many researchers have kind of pulled all the science together. And there's many, many ways that parasites cause inflammation, but also immune dysfunction in our body. We're the host. They live inside of us. They need us to survive. So they're going to release different types of molecules, mixtures of molecules that suppress our immune system so that our immune system will leave them alone. And that's because a lot of people are like, like, why do I have parasites? Well, you're exposed to parasites. You're probably on a lot of antibiotic use as a young child, which disrupts our microbiome, and then you're exposed. And then these parasites have a way to 
allow the body to let them live inside of us. And so um, it's known that these molecules they secrete is not just to suppress our immune system, but also they're freeloaders inside of us, right? They need nutrition. So some of the molecules are really helping to break down hemoglobin so that they can get essential nutrients, help to destroy collagen so that they can move easier through our tissue. So they release things to promote their survival in our body. And some of the molecules would be immunosuppressive molecules, not immunomodulatory molecules. All right, so there's... Um, different studies and so they're like well you know giving people worms would be it wouldn't be good because like if you give them worms then if you give them a vaccine they're not going to mount a reaction so when you get a vaccination your immune system is supposed to respond to the vaccine that you're getting and I'm not a proponent of vaccines right now I I thought you know years ago the idea of vaccines were really great but now there's just a lot of concerns with safety etc do your own research on that. But again, this shows you what I'm just sharing with you, this one study, uh, Parasite Immunology. Uh, it, it was in the Journal of Parasite Immunology where the researchers were talking about, you know, when people are infected with worms, it suppresses their immune system and they're not able to, like the vaccine isn't going to do anything because their immune system is not going to mount a proper response. And so they're worried about developed country, underdeveloped countries. And there are several different parasite infections that can that um, can reduce EAE, so that that's the MS model in animals, the EAE. So there is uh, trypanosoma and plasmodium, which would be malaria and uh, trichinella, and also the hookworm. And I've even seen also where the I think liver flukes also can help. I don't know if they reduced EAE. I think it was, yes. I think I've got it later on in my research here. So, so the bottom line is, let's talk about a few different pointers here to just summarize. You guys can ask me questions about parasites. You can ask me questions about this research if you want in a few minutes. But just making sense of the research. And um, you may have heard of this, you know, giving hookworms to MS patients. It could be really helpful. But number one, most MS patients are not okay with being infected with worms. I'm not, maybe you let me know if you are. I certainly am not. So they, they said that, you know, it's, and there's various reasons why it's not ethical, but one is just that people just don't want to have worms in them. It's kind of a common sense thing. Number two, in some cases, when we inoculate an MS patient with worms, that can cause the wor can cause a worm infection and inflammation caused by the worm because they're feeding, they're mating, they're moving around in the body, they're, they're uh, drop, dropping their waste inside of us, they're releasing different molecules that can cause all kinds of symptoms in us. They have their own parasites that they infect us with. So they have, there's a lot of opportunity for, you know, using worm therapy to actually doing the opposite and causing a lot more inflammation. Point number three is they find that in the research I've looked at that the immature larval form of the hookworm is what's used in the trials and it must be produced by mammals and on a large global scale, they feel that that's just not going to be very realistic to produce, you know, tons and tons of, lar of worm larvae and then to be able to follow good manufacturing practices so that it's safe it's it's not a it's not, it's a pretty risky thing and then hookworm therapy also pro poses a significant risk of infection with other uh, human parasites for example hookworm they hookworms are harvested from the feces of infected uh, individuals and so if if they're pulling hookworms out of an out of whatever animal or wherever they're getting them from, and they may have other parasites, so there can be some contamination with, so you might be getting, that's the same with fecal transplant. So a fecal transplant can save your life if you have C. diff, but you could also be picking up other parasites that that person had. So you could run the risk of getting other parasites by using worm therapy. 
And the last one I think is really, really key. And I just want to read it because it's, it's just, it summarizes it so nice. So the worms suppress and compromise the immune system of the person they infect, which prevents the immune system from having a strong and healthy response to other parasites. So it makes us weaker. It makes us more vulnerable to other parasites becoming, establishing themselves in our body. The, the, uh, the patient infected with worms is immune compromised, similar to if a patient is taking immunosuppressive drugs. That kind of rings a similar bell to how we're treating MS. We're just using immunosuppressive drugs. So this is another way that they're trying, they're just trying to find, you know, like patents ran out after a few years. And so, okay, we've got to, we've got to keep some things in the pipeline here. We've got to keep some different products that we can market and so that we can patent them and we can charge, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 thousand dollars per year per patient. It's just awful. Anyhow, so worm therapy, it may be a greater risk than benefit for anyone who is de who is already immune compromised, such as, so children aren't really immune compromised. Their, their immune system is developing, right? So they don't have a fully developed immune system. So giving them worms would give them a greater risk for potential health problems and any benefits. Elderly would be the same thing. And elderly are typically quite infested with parasites. So why give them another one, right? That's why they're having a lot of the symptoms. And then with pregnant women, there is, because of the change in hormones, our immune system is, there's a, like a, a how do you say it nicely? Like, we don't want the immune system to go after the developing baby, so the immune system, the inflammatory part of the immune system is a little bit suppressed or decreased. And so, you know, if you're giving people worms and their immune system is in any situation where it is not just totally where it normally would be, then they're running the risk of having more um, adverse effects and benefits for sure. So because of the, this is, this is the punchline here. So because of the major ethical issues with using parasites that are human pathogens, so that means that they're, they're disease-causing microbes in humans, as they cause sickness and disability and death, researchers feel that a safer and more reliable alternative to live worm infections um, would be to identify the specific immune modulatory molecules. They're actually immune suppressive molecules produced by the worms. And this way, pharmaceutical companies could make synthetic molecules. They can make, they can take copies of the immunosuppressive molecules that the worms produce and they can make synthetic copies, and then they can have a new drug, and then they can sell it, and then they can give us another immunosuppressive drug. Are you guys excited? Oh, it's just so frustrating. Um, I don't know how dumb they think we are. I guess it's because maybe, I, don't, I just don't even know. I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm speechless, I don't know what you think about it. Please let me know what you think, because it's, uh, it's, it's quite awful. <laughs> yikes, yikes, yes, absolutely. No, thanks. So yeah, we're not interested anymore. Immuno like how many years? I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 35 years ago. What's changed? Nothing. They're still using immunosuppressive drugs. Why? Because they are so incredibly lucrative. That is why they're using immunosuppressive drugs. So when you hear, you know, like different Taught doctors or researchers talking about, oh, there's this research that worms are really good for MS, just whatever. Like if you want to share the video that I've made, that would be great if you just want to shake your head and walk away, but just don't buy it and don't let yourself be exposed to that nonsense. There is a much better way to deal with multiple sclerosis. And what we do is we support our immune system so we really support immune modulation. And with the live disease-free diet, we notice significant immune modulation, like really, really huge, where people notice that double vision corrects, spasticity can decrease significantly, bladder function improves tremendously, 
people feel stronger, they're sleeping better, they, their mood improves, they're, they're just like, it's just shocking when people start to change their diet because the favorite food for these parasites, let me know if you know what they are, if you've been following me, you know, but what is the, they eat all kinds of different food, right? But what is the favorite food? What is it that they just binge on when we eat it. They absolutely love it. They produce lots of toxins, makes them active. Caffeine is also, but food. It is, let's see if you guys got it. Absolutely, so sugar and all of these grains and processed carbs, they break down to simple sugars in our body. And so when we are eating a lot of carbs and we have a lot of parasites, they're gonna be pretty active. When we decrease the carbs, uh, they don't love fat as much. And animal protein, if you eat moderate amounts of animal protein, it's fine. Large amounts will be converted to sugar also in your blood. So for a woman, three to four ounces. For a man, five, four, four to five ounces roughly per meal of animal protein. Then you know, And you have lots of healthy fats and really low-carb vegetables. It's life-changing. Try it. The Live Disease-Free Diet Guidelines are available on our website. They're free. You can even do a Google search, Live Disease-Free Guidelines. There's a short video, and there's a little, uh, little PDF that you can print off and put in your kitchen or just download that gives you all of the do's and don'ts. And that's to get you started and to get you believing that, yes, that, that you're dealing with parasites. And then we support the body. So this is where we make sure we're having daily bowel movements. We make sure that we're sleeping at least eight hours per night. We look at our blood work. We support our physiology. Um, some of us that are really sick, we might take a binder to help suck up the poisons in the intestine so that we're feeling a lot better. So all of these things are helping immune modulation, not immune suppression. We're not suppressing the immune system. We need our immune system. And if you are on any of these disease-modifying drugs, I really encourage you to do a little research because the ones that are that are used right now that are prescribed mostly, they are like they're old chemo drugs that have been repurposed and the adverse effect is cancer. And then what is worse, cancer or MS? So please look into that. They do not treat parasites. They suppress your B cells. Some of them do your B and your T cells. And you need those cells in order to survive, to live. So it's very, very important to make sure you know how these drugs are working in the body. We call that the mode of action. So by the time we're ready to treat parasites, it could be three to six weeks. Actually, I have one student in the academy right now. We just do our calls on Tuesday night, so that was last night. And she she shares some amazing pictures. She had them on uh, paper plates. And she doesn't have multiple sclerosis. She just had extreme pain. And to the point where she literally was ready to treat very quickly. Like she was not messing around. She was bedridden with pain. And she's passed, I would think, at least three or four very, very large worms. Hard to tell if they're tapeworms or roundworms, but at least 20 inches, give or take. Just absolutely shocking. And so she's a little tired right now. She hasn't passed them all, but she's like, I'm noticeably better with my pain. And that's crazy because the three parasite drugs she's using are what most commonly, you know, our, start, our students are starting off with. And that would be... And again, I'm not, I'm not telling you this because I'm saying this is what you need. I'm telling you this because um, this is like, it's for educational purposes. And these students normally are energy tested, but we've worked with hundreds of students. So a lot of students with MS, they really do well with albendazole and they get prescriptions for albendazole, ivermectin, and alinea. And then the other two that are very often helpful are praziquantel and parental pomoate, sometimes niclosamide. So praziquantel and parental pomoate are more for the flatworms, the tapeworms, and the flukes. But the roundworms would be more the albendazole, but they also do tapeworms too. Albendazole also treats tapeworms, but albendazole and ivermectin, for sure, roundworms, and alinea, roundworms, tapeworms. So there's a synergistic effect. And then we're also using the oxidizing agent, which I can't talk about on these platforms. And if you want to learn more about using the oxidizing agent and treating parasites, you can go to Rumble and you can find it there. Or you can go to our website and just look up the blog post, um, Oxygen Therapies for Treating Parasites, and you'll learn all about that. So we use a combination of parasite drugs that we test well for, 
and then also the oxidizing agent, which is bringing oxygen in, and that really helps to kill parasites. And then we're also using antimicrobial herbs. It does require all three to recover. The parasite drugs by themselves are not enough. At this point, maybe, you know, in another five years when we've worked with another few hundred students and more doctors are involved, more doctors are getting involved now, more doctors are open. It's happening pretty quickly. I'm really, really excited about that. Uh, but they just weren't trained and they didn't know, right? And so it's really ex exciting. We would love to just recover with just herbs, but what we have found, we started with our students with just herbs for several years. And if you're somebody who's just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, you don't have a lot of disability or maybe the pre-diagnosis or maybe less than five years diagnosis, then herbs can take you quite a ways where you can feel pretty much symptom-free. But we have found that the herbs are not getting rid of the very large roundworms. So the ones that are 15 to 30 inches long and they some of them could be tapeworms too so the herbs by themselves we have not found them to be helpful enough to get them out and that's why we use the parasite drugs but they're tolerated really well and because we do all the prep work before people tolerate them really well so we want to do immune modulation before we start treating we want people to feel a lot better that way they tolerate the treatments better they can go quicker they they don't they can continue to work we we want to avoid herxheimer reactions herxheimer reactions are not helpful so um so i shared all of that i just want to make sure that Yes, I think I've covered everything else. And one last thing that I wanted to share about the research is that looking at different studies, like when they are, you know, infecting uh, humans with the, uh, the different, the hookworm from animals, they're not really finding a really big difference. It's, it's maybe very minor to nothing. So they're grasping at straws because they're looking for new potential drugs. That's what they're looking for, is new potential patentable drugs. So I'll see if you guys have any questions. Hi, Rita. Nice to see you there. Um, how do, uh, Araya, you're wondering, how do you work with me in the program? So I'll tell you right now. So number one is that when you're done this event with me, the video, then what you'll do is you'll just go to my masterclass training. You'll see the link in the description of this video. You click on that and that explains the live disease free program in, in a lot more detail. It really helps you to understand number one, why we're sick. And then it talks about the steps we take to recover in more detail than I have. And then it sh shares a whole bunch of case studies that of students that have been through the process. And if you want to hear their words from their mouth, you can go to our website, livediseasefree.com. You'll see right on the homepage. You can click on that and you can listen to different students explaining what their experience was. We also have a playlist on YouTube, Live Disease Free. Um, so then once you've listened to my masterclass training, if you feel like, yes, this is something that I want to do, then you, like at the end of the masterclass training, you're going to have an opportunity to fill out a form. And that form gives me information, gives our team information. Are you ready? And if you're ready, then you will get a link to my calendar where you can book a time to chat with me. But before we chat, what's really important is that you listen to the Coachathon. And you'll get a link to the Coachathon. The Coachathon, it just goes a lot more in detail of into the program. So exactly like how do we find tra practitioners? How do we get access to treatments? How do we do this? How do we do that? And that's what's all explained on the Coachathon. So once you finish the Coachathon, there's a link to my calendar and you will be able to book a time that works for you. Some students, they just join the academy right away. Then they just, after they listen to the Coachathon, they're so excited, they just join. But you and I are going to talk before, like at the early stages of you working of us working together for sure so because I want to get to know you I want to get to know a little bit about your health history what you've been through I want you to have an opportunity to ask me questions I want to get you off to a really strong start so whether you join from listening to the coachathon it'll tell you how you can join or whether you want to first ask me questions we are still going to chat and I want to make that personal connection with you because the live disease free plan it is the academy. It is a 90 day 
So that's weekly support for 90 days. And in that time, you'll be able to go through at least one treatment cycle. And then there's another three months of support. So it's about six months of support. Uh, and it'll, it's completely, if you implement what I share, it is completely life changing. And I'm just so honored to support all of you. All right. You are so very welcome. Thank you so much for sharing my website, uh, Dvan. And Mariah, um, you've tried that and you've even reached out via email and haven't found the information. Okay, there is a link. Um, so there is a link right beside this video. I don't know if you can see the description right now, but as soon as I'm done, you'll see the link. And I will definitely, will reach out to you on Facebook also to make sure that you get it. <laughs> Dee, you're just so helpful. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. It is absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It's just, you can't make this stuff up. So Joanne is saying, yes, I agree. Ocrevus kills the immune system. It does. It destroys your B cells. Absolutely. And I'm not against pharmaceutical medication. There's a time and a place. If I'm in a terrible accident and I need pain relief, it is very helpful. If you're doing surgery, right, there's certain pharmaceuticals you need. If you have an acute bacterial infection, it can save your life. But for many of us, we were on too many antibiotics. The doctors didn't know that we were so out of balance. And then whatever parasites were in our environment, they became a real problem. They got a real stronghold in our body. Hello, Tracy. The last time I went to the neurologist, I asked her if she had ever heard of the research of Dr. Alan McDonald done on neurodegenerative diseases and parasites in the central nervous system. She said no, but had I heard about them using worms to treat MS? Er, yep, that's it, eh? So you know that our doctors, our neurologists, the information that they're getting is very, very controlled. So what they're getting from the, 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 the medical association that they're part of and what they're getting from their patients is very different. So that, that is the truth. What you just shared, Tracy, is actually awful, but it is what's happening. So Deborah, I do worry about the MS drugs. You should, honestly, Deborah, you definitely should worry. There's a better way to treat MS. And I said, just don't live in fear. Don't just avoid because you're too scared. What's better is to actually, you know, face it head on, read up, go to the pdr.net. You can even just go online and you'll find lots of different pharmaceutical websites where you can read up on the mode of action, how the drugs are working in your body. And... Both Dr. Alan McDonald and uh, recently I was talking with a university professor and I, he is a doctor. I don't know if he's a neurologist, but he, his mom had MS. I think he works in neurology, so I bet you he is. But they both shared that. They said, if multiple sclerosis is an infectious disease, if it's caused by parasites, then taking an immunosuppressive drug would be disastrous right? Because your, our immune system is already, just like the researchers I shared, they say what, when your immune system is suppressed by parasites and then you are taking another immunosuppressive drug on top of that, then you are weak, we're weaker and then we are more vulnerable to other parasites. And they come to us from our produce. It's not just from meat, but from fruits and from vegetables, from our pets. Most of us, a lot of us have pets from shopping carts, from eating out in restaurants, from gardening, walking barefoot on the ground. Parasites are a part of life. We cannot avoid them, unfortunately. But what we have to do is we have to restore balance. We have to decrease the number of parasites in our body so that we feel symptom-free. And then we have to ma learn how to manage that for the rest of our life. Keep building up the good and periodically knock back the bad. And that is the key to recovering from multiple sclerosis and other diseases also. Jan, with your academy, will you share more food specifics that are allowed? Absolutely. The, the guidelines that I have on our website, they're just general because it gets people started. And we've had so many people that have reported back that they've had tremendous symptom improvements. But 
in the academy, there's a ton of FAQs, there's a cheat sheet, there's the shopping list, there's meal ideas. I check your work. So I'm making sure that you are in the target zone and you're using the chronometer app. So we're making sure that you are actually in the target zone so that you do get the benefit of the symptom improvements, that immune modulation before you start to treat. Um, yes, she has food lists. So Jen, you're so welcome. Um, you missed the beginning, Sonia. It will be recorded. And what we're talking about is how drug companies are really excited because of the potential that worms, if you give them to MS, or if you give the molecules that worms make to MS patients, that could potentially modulate the immune system. They call it modulation, we call it immune suppression. And it really is immune suppression because there's nothing positive about it. The, the parasites are doing this so they survive. They're not doing it to support our immune system at all. So, awesome, let's see. So Sonia, I don't want to use MS drugs. The side effects are, were brutal. And just to be honest, I have interviewed thousands of people, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've interviewed thousands of people that have multiple sclerosis. And there are many, many people that are not using the disease-modifying drugs. They haven't worked with me, but they, they just knew that, number one, when they were off of them, they felt a lot better than when they were on them. They're very, very concerned about the adverse effects. They researched to see what the adverse effects were, and they're really worried about that. So many people are not using the disease-modifying drugs. You don't have to. If you want to use them, if you feel that's the best option for you, you should. But if you don't want to, you sure don't have to. You said, I wish there was uh, somewhere... I wish there was somewhere or a doctor that I could that could that could prescribe some of the medicine so I could get rid of the parasites li parasites lining my gut. So all you have to do is um, just reach out to us because we help you to do that. We'll help you to access all the treatments, any practitioners you need. This is what we do. We work with pharmacists. We work with all kinds of practitioners. Um, so that is our job. That is our expertise. Plus, we really know how these parasite drugs work in the body, how they're tolerated, what, what people usually test well for, how, what is a safe way to take them. All of that, that's the expertise that we've been doing. But again, it's not just about popping a pill because the parasite drugs on their own would not be a magic cure. But it's when you put it all together, when you support your immune system, when you stop feeding the infections and then you start to treat the parasites, it's so absolutely shocking how good you will feel. Last question here. So um, Roseanne, the, bio the biologic drugs given for asthma, nasal polyps and eczema can cause parasite infections, for example. So I'm not sure, maybe you're talking about immunosuppressive drugs. I don't know what they are. It's very, very important to definitely understand, like when you're taking a drug, don't just take it, read up on the adverse effects. So yes, immunosuppressive drugs, any immunosuppressive drugs will increase the likelihood that we can have parasites establishing themselves because it's all weakening our soldiers. It's weakening our natural defense. And last one, Sonia, aren't MS drugs toxic? Yes, they are. So what I'm talking about is parasite drugs, which are very different than MS drugs. So all the MS drugs are immune, immunosuppressive drugs. The parasite drugs are you're taking them short term, not for long, and you're just treating the parasites. So they're very, very different treatments and very different purposes. So the parasite drugs are just helping you to treat the cause of why you're sick. So you can just create health and get on with your life. The immunosuppressive drugs is to allow you to live with the parasites for the rest of your life, suffer. Um, they'll have to keep switching up these drugs because you can only handle them for so long. It is not, it is not a good option for recovering from MS. It does ruin your immune system. Is there a specific, is there something specific to look for like baclofen? Um, our students are able to come off of all the medications working with their doctor. So when, 
when you treat the parasites, well, first of all, when you're doing the prep phase, a lot of people notice that the pain and the spasticity decreases. And then as they treat, their spasticity resolves. So then they are able to just come off of all their meds slowly. They work with their pharmacist to make sure, because some medications you cannot just quit quickly. You have to taper them down. And so this is where you work with your experts, your doctors, your pharmacists to decrease the medication slowly. And then you don't need baclofen because you won't have spasticity or pain. All right, so with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I really thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. I really hope that now when they're talking about worm therapy for multiple sclerosis, maybe you can even give, give a few words of wisdom in this area. Say, yeah, worms, they do suppress our immune system, but is that really a good idea? Do we want to, aren't the disease modifying drugs are already suppressing our immune system? Doesn't that make us weaker? Like, is that really immune modulation or is that making us weaker, right? And that's all that it is. And we don't want any more disease modifying drugs. We want to treat the parasites. We want change. So if you are all about change, then please like, and if you found this helpful, like and share and subscribe to our YouTube and uh, Facebook and also Rumble. And please share these videos, share the content. We have an amazing website, Live Disease Free. Go to look at our blog posts if you haven't seen them yet. Every week I cover a really important topic. And so go there and you'll learn so incredible much. You'll be so convinced that you know what you need to do to recover and share that with other people. We want change. We want the doctors to take this over. So important. And also um, just if you're at that place, like some of you maybe just where you're, Pam, I get it. I've been following you. I've been watching your stuff and I'm ready to treat the parasites. I need a proven plan. I need support. Watch my masterclass training and then you can just watch that and you'll be able to start within a day or so. So have a wonderful week and take care and bye-bye for now.